and welcome to the March 2017 edition of the Town Administrator's Report. We're recording here in the studios of NORCAM in the town center here in North Reading. We thank NORCAM for their assistance in putting this production on. The topic for this session will be the March 2017 Special Town Meeting, which is scheduled to take place on Monday, March 13th, 2017 at 7 o'clock p.m. at the Performing Arts Center in North Reading High School. And with me today to discuss the warrant and the articles on there is Town Planner Danielle McKnight. Hi. Danielle, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. So first, if you're a resident of the town, you should have received a copy of the warrant in the mail uh, roughly one week ago. You'll see that there are six warrant articles on there. We encourage you to review it. There's also a lot of information online and videos of previous Board of Selectmen and Community Planning Commission meeting discussions on these articles, so that's an, a place to find more information. Uh, but we're here today to hopefully summarize some of the articles that are on there and provide some information for the public in advance of the meeting. Um, and uh, we're, we're happy to do so. Danielle, again, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. So there are four articles on the uh, warrant relative to zoning, um, and they're all targeted towards the area of Lowell Road approaching the Wilmington border. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the articles and then maybe about why they've come up now? Sure. Um, so the purpose of the zoning articles is really to um, accommodate a development that's been selected through um, a request for proposals process. Um, I'll give a little bit of background um, as far as how, how we got to where we are uh, now. Uh, the Economic Development Committee has been um, sort of leading the way as far as looking for a, a way to uh, sell and redevelop the uh, former JT Berry Sanatorium property, the Re Rehabilita Rehabilitation Center um, that has been vacant for many years. Um, after acquiring it from the state back in 2014, the town embarked on a process where um, we set about uh, setting some criteria for figuring out how we wanted to sell and redevelop uh, that land. And um, the Economic Development Committee, as I mentioned, has been very heavily involved in that. They developed um, a request for proposals last year for the larger of the two properties, 104 Lowell Road. And in that process, um, the town decided that they wanted to keep it very open in terms of use. There was no one particular use. We, we did do a, marketing, uh, a market study to figure out what might do well there. Um, and, you know, we had some expectations for, for what we might see in terms of potential development, but um, there was wide agreement that uh, there shouldn't be a particular use, um, you know, to, to limit the, 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 the range of possible development opportunities. So mm -hmm. as, the, uh, as we put out the RFP, we stated very clearly that the town would consider zoning changes to accommodate a project uh, that did not currently have an allowed, you know, whose use was not currently allowed by our zoning. So that's what brings us to this town meeting. Um, we, after the RFP process, the Economic Development Committee recommended to the selectmen and the selectmen accepted um, a proposal from Pulte Homes for 450 units of um, age-restricted 55 and over uh, multifamily housing units. So in order to make this happen, there are a number of zoning changes that are required. Um, one was a zoning change, um, which is actually the very first article in the warrant to amend the town's existing regulations pertaining to multifamily development to make it very, very clear that there are different multifamily development criteria and regulations um, and controls in different zoning districts throughout the town. We currently only have one residential multifamily zoning district and it only pertains to one property and that's the development that people might be familiar with at um, Railroad Avenue or 113 Haverhill uh, Street. I'm sorry, yes, 113 Haverhill Street. Um, that uh, development is um, in its own zoning district. It's um, that one property has its own criteria mm -hmm. that go along with the zoning bylaw. Um, the problem with the zoning bylaw as it's written is in some places it's very, very clear that those particular controls only apply to that one property. In other places it's not clear at all. So a person could potentially interpret the zoning as meaning that any multifamily development in town has a certain set of rules, and we don't really think that that had been the intent of that zoning. Um, and so the, the first article is to clarify that RM zoning provisions as stated in the bylaw are strictly for the RM zone. That's number one. Um, the second article is um, an amendment that establishes a multifamily housing overlay district in the vicinity of the Berry property. So 102 Lowell Road and uh, four surrounding properties, which are currently zoned industrial office, 
would um, have, we'd be subject to an overlay district. Um, that means that the underlying zoning is left intact, so all of the uses that are currently allowed in IO aren't touched. Um, all of that remains. It's simply an overlay, which means that in addition, um, multifamily housing would be allowed, and that overlay district contains certain provisions, controls, etc., um, and that would allow for the use um, that, that Pulte Homes is proposing. So in the, the properties that are nearby, the town does own property uh, at the end of uh, North Street on Lowell Road, correct? Yes. Uh, Rita Mullen Park, mm -hmm. if, I, if, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, what's the impact on the park? Well, there's no proposed development at all for uh, Rita Mullen Park. It currently is um, protected and um, would not be uh, developed. It's not a subject of the current zoning proposal. Mm -hmm. All of our parks in town are actually zoned within um, the zoning district that they're surrounded by. So we mm -hmm. have parks, like, for example, if River Park is in Residence A, no one's going to be build, building single family houses on the park, but that happens to be its zone because that's what's around it. We don't mm -hmm. have a separate zone just for parkland. Um, so currently Rita Mellon Park is zoned industrial office. There are allowed uses um, that still can't be built on that property because mm -hmm. it was acquired by the town for those purposes and it would take special legislation and, and, and town meeting action to actually do anything with that property other than um, its use as a park. So while it could be confusing or um, alarming to see a park included in a zoning overlay district, I mean, we do want people to understand that all of our parks are zoned with their surrounding zoning, and it's simply because it's already included in that cluster of industrial office zoned properties mm -hmm. that um, it would be included in the zoning. Okay. Well, thank you for that clarification. You're welcome. And th there are two other articles uh, as well, is that correct? Yes. Um, so then we have article three. Um, which is the changes to the dimensional density requirements of industrial office. So there were a few items that were specific to the Pulte proposal um, that, that the Planning Commission looked at and um, agreed could be made. Mm -hmm. um, one of them was to raise the height limit a little bit. So currently in industrial office, um, 50 feet is the height limit for, for buildings. And um, the CPC has, in the past year, already talked about raising the height limit in industrial office because um, just in the interest of um, promoting you know, further economic development and um, making development a little bit more flexible in some of these areas, mm -hmm. they have talked about going up even to 80 feet has been a you know, subject of discussion. For this particular proposal, um, Pulte has told us that they really just need 60 feet. And so for right now, um, that's all that the CPC wants to propose. And because uh, we, we, we didn't make this subject only to the zoning overlay district for the reason that we thought it was appropriate or the CPC thought it was appropriate for everywhere in industrial office. They, they really felt that um, having a 60-foot height limit in all of our industrial office zoning districts um, was, was appropriate. Mm -hmm. So that would be one change that's dimensional. Um, another one had to do with clarification of parking and how parking garage heights are measured. So currently in the zoning, it states that a story and a half of garage parking does not count toward the, the limit of stories. So four stories is the limit in industrial office, but a story and a half can be garage parking and it does not count toward that four. We just wanted to clarify in the zoning that not only is there a story limit there, but also a height allowance, so 15 feet, so it's one and a half stories or 15 feet. And that was important in terms of the way that Pulte was looking at um, their proposal because we weren't really sure like, the form that a garage might take. It could be a story and a half, it could be a story. We really wanted to have a height limit in there to mm -hmm. really clarify what, what could be done there. Mm -hmm. So that's somewhat of a minor change because it's, it's not so much a change as a clarification. You know, a story and a half can be a particular height. Sure. Um, there's also... Um, a provision which actually does not apply to the Pulte proposal, but it's um, really for the good of the industrial office district as a whole and will apply to 102 Lowell Road, which is a smaller property um, that, this, that we also acquired from the state, which the town will be looking to um, sell and redevelop also. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> this pertains just to uh, commercial development, particularly retail. There's a provision in industrial office currently that says that um, you can't have uh, retail if it's in a building that's under 50,000 square feet. And the CPC has talked about this, again, as another possible change over the last year, um, just in terms of um, encouraging development, particularly you know, new retail de development, new commercial development, which we really want to encourage, having a provision that said that you had to be in a building of the size really could be restrictive mm -hmm. for potential 
potential new development. It doesn't apply to Pulte because the Pulte proposal is purely residential. There is no commercial component to that project, but looking ahead to 102 Lowell Road and potentially anything else, whether it's Concord Street or anywhere else in town um, that's industrial office zoned, uh, we just thought that that would be a beneficial change. Um, so that's it for Article 3. Um, and then we have Article 4, which is a small change, but is actually a really important clarification. So Section 200-4 of the zoning is where we have our definitions. And there is a definition that's existed in the zoning um, for overlay districts um, that is a little bit inconsistent with what's in the rest of the zoning, and this amendment seeks to clarify that. So in this definition, it says that where there's an overlay district, it's always the more restrictive provision that controls, whether that restrictive provision is in the overlay provision or if it's in the underlying base zoning. Mm. And the way that overlays really work is they can be more or less restrictive. Um, so for example, we have an aquifer protection district, which is more restrictive. So if you're in an aquifer protection district, you have additional regulations. On top of your underlying zoning, you have to meet additional regulations and there are more restrictions. If you're, exam for example, if you're in an, an, another overlay district, such as the affordable housing overlay, or you're in the um, very smart growth 40R district, you actually have additional uses that are an option to you. So it's a less restrictive zone. So you can, um, in, in that type of an overlay, you actually have permission to do additional uses. Mm -hmm. So the overlay, the type of overlay that we're introducing um, in the vicinity of 104 Lowell Road is of the variety that is a less restrictive. So we wanted to be sure that um, we were clarifying that it's not necessarily the more restrictive provisions that are always control because that really is contradictory to the definition and the concept of what an overlay zoning district mm -hmm. is. So those Excellent. are the four articles. Excellent. Thank you very much for the, uh, for the explanation and obviously approval of these four articles would allow um, the development proposal to move forward under the zoning at least. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that there'll be other steps that would need to be followed during the development uh, process. Um, what, what would be forecast to be next uh, should there be approval of these zoning bylaws for the proposed um, housing development? So the next steps really would be if the zoning is approved, um, we would begin a process um, with Pulte where we would be coordinating their expedited permitting. Mm -hmm. So um, 104 and 102 Lowell Road are both within the uh, 43D district. And for, for those who may not know, 43D is a state statute that allows towns to um, commit particular properties to expedited permitting. And that's done um, as a marketing tool. Mm -hmm. it's, it's done as a way to say, you know, North Reading is ready to, to do business and is ready for development. Um, it's a way to provide some certainty for developers that one way or another they'll have an answer for their various um, permits. It's not a guarantee that they get the permits, it's just a guarantee that the town has to respond within a six month time frame, which we think is very doable. You know, in terms of permitting, I think that, you know, the, the various um, boards and d departments that um, are involved in development permitting are, are, we expedite things to the, to the degree that we can and mm -hmm. we, you know, we don't have unnecessarily long lag times. Um, we really like to keep on top of the permitting, but this is really a way to uh, tell the developer that we are, we are ready to hear their project, um, ready to act on the project, and it actually offers a consolidated permitting process whereby all the boards and commissions who have to give a permit have a, a consolidated hearing and they present to everybody at the same time. So that would really be the next step. Okay. That's great. Excellent. Well, thank you for the explanation with regard to the, uh, the Berry property and the zoning articles again. Um, it's obviously a very uh, important uh, decision and, and, uh, for, for, the, for the townspeople to make, and you know, we, we look forward to the discussion at the town meeting on March 13th. Uh, there are two other articles that are on the warrant as well, one of which does have uh, some uh, relationship to the zoning bylaw, and that's the uh, proposed prohibition on recreational marijuana sales. So I know there's been a lot of discussion with regard to marijuana, um, in particular medical marijuana, recently here in North Reading. This is a bylaw that relates to recreational marijuana, marijuana and uh, is in re response to the changes in state law that were approved at the ballot in the November 2016 state election. Uh, could you tell us what the article, as, as uh, proposed by the Planning Commission, uh, would do? Sure. So this is an article. Um, it is uh, sponsored by the... Planning Commission at the request of the selectmen, and um, what the current article would do uh, would, would be to prohibit the use or establish the use of recreational marijuana and then prohibit it. Mm -hmm. So it, it would be a very simple um, 
addition to the bylaw, which is um, to introduce a new section of prohibited uses and to list recreational marijuana as a prohibited use, it wouldn't have any impact on the um, medical marijuana bylaw that we that we currently have. So how would this compare to the medical marijuana bylaw that we have? Because uh, townspeople may remember we had quite a bit of discussion a few years ago about uh, establishing certain zones in a certain area, and there was an area on Concord Street that was designated as uh, being a place where a special permit could be granted. H how does this compare to that zoning? This is just a ban. Mm -hmm. This is, um, so for medical marijuana, for anyone who is interested in opening a medical marijuana establishment, there's a process they can follow. It's allowed in the industrial office zoning district by special permit as long as it's located a certain distance from certain sensitive uses like schools, parks, playgrounds, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, and it's available by special permit issued by the Board of Selectmen. It's also subject to um, employees being licensed by the Board of Selectmen and um, a number of other types of um, uh, you know, regulations, both local and, and state regulations. Mm -hmm. This is just a ban. Um, this would, I believe, if, if town meeting does pass this, it would then move on to a, a, a ballot referendum. That's correct, in yes. Town so, election. so the selectmen have had some discussion as well for those who haven't followed um, and have been advised by town council that the way the state law was approved and the way it stands right now, uh, we've been advised that the town, uh, if it seeks to prohibit recreational marijuana sales, that it would uh, approve a zoning bylaw, which is what's been proposed, as Danielle described, as well as ask for a vote of the uh, townspeople at the uh, at a town election, which would in all likelihood be the upcoming annual town election in May. So depending upon the outcome of those discussions, there may be a, a, a question on the ballot at the annual town election in May. Um, again, uh, something that we'll continue to watch. Um, there has been some discussion during the planning process for this with regard to the law as it stands now and what might happen at the state level. And we've seen that uh, there may be changes to the law. Uh, it's unclear what the extent of those changes might be. There already has been one change, which was to delay implementation by a period of time. Um, and that took place back in December. But uh, we'll continue to work with uh, our legislative delegation, um, including Representative Brad Jones, who's provided us information to guide us in our decision-making process. But at this point, based on what the law says, uh, this is what we've been advised, and the policymakers have had some discussion, the selectmen at least, about a potential uh, ban of recreational marijuana sales, and this would be the avenue that would achieve that. So yeah, I'm sure uh, we'll look forward to, again, discussion at the town meeting on March 13th. The final Warren article uh, doesn't necessarily relate to uh, zoning. Uh, it's uh, for a project uh, for design or construction for uh, facilities at the Arthur Kenny uh, Field, which is the turf field uh, in front of the high school middle, middle school complex. Uh, the field uh, does not currently have public restrooms, and um, this project would construct public restrooms at that location. Uh, there's been some planning work underway uh, that's advisory to the Board of Selectmen by the Athletic Facilities Subcommittee, which was established by the school committee last year. And uh, we expect that there may be a recommendation that's made with regard to that project, although um, the planning is still very active uh, and uh, will be up until the evening of town meeting. Uh, but we ask folks you know, to continue to, to monitor that and to attend town meeting. Danielle, I want to thank you for being here today to discuss the, uh, the project. Obviously, the reuse of the Berry project represents uh, a, a tremendous potential opportunity for the town and these zoning uh, actions are critical for that to be able to move forward. So thank you for your, your insight. You're welcome. And uh, again, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we ask you to participate in the June town, in the, excuse me, in the March town meeting on Monday, March 13th at 7 o'clock p.m. in the Performing Arts Center at North Reading High School. Uh, I'm Michael Gilberto, town administrator. Danielle McKnight, again, thank you very much. Take care. You're welcome.